In this video we learn how to calculate the change in entropy in the system during gas expansions. Where in the last video we have introduced elementary concepts in entropy such as the thermodynamic definition of entropy, which we have right here, and then also the second law which states that uh, if a process is spontaneous then the change in entropy in the universe is positive, the entropy of the universe should increase, and if the process is occurring at equilibrium, then uh, the change in entropy in the universe is zero, or the entropy of the universe stays constant. All right, so after that introduction, this is a good time to start working in applied problems with entropy. And, and the first uh, simple example that we can uh, choose here, the first easy application, would be a gas expansion, like the one that we, like the ones that we have used in the first law. All right, so here you have two moles of an ideal gas at 298 Kelvin, uh, occupying a volume of 10 liters, and then we let this expand until the volume doubles. Notice that the expansion is isothermal, right? So the temperature is constant. All right, so let's see uh, how we can calculate the change in entropy in this gas expansion of an ideal gas. Now, the, uh, uh, there's two ways that we're going to do this gas expansion. First, we're gonna do it reversibly, and then we're gonna do it against a constant external pressure of one atmosphere. Now, let's uh, try to do this reversibly. All right, so that will be our first goal, try to do this reversibly. Remember that a reversible gas expansion is that uh, expansion that gives you maximum work, okay? So this is kind of the process where we have an infinite a number of infinitesimal masses on top of this piston, and we remove one at a time so that the pressure of the gas is always equalized by the outside pressure, so this would take an infinite amount of time to do, so it's an idealized process, but it's the one that gives you maximum work. Okay, that's why it's interesting. All right, so let's calculate that one. Uh, all right, so we just have to take this expression and just make sure that we're uh, talking about the system. So here we're calculating the change in entropy in the system. And uh, the way that we do that then is say, well, the change in entropy in the system, this is the integral of the differential of Q rev over T, all right, so notice that uh, this process is actually isothermal, right? So the temperature doesn't change. If the temperature doesn't change, then uh, uh, both of those terms in the, uh, in the integral are actually constant. Uh, well, this one is not constant, but that one is constant. And then the integral uh, of the numerator is very simple, right? Notice that this simply integrates to Q reversible over T. Right, that's a great advantage of having isothermal processes, right? The, the calculation of the change in entropy is going to be quite straightforward. All right, so then uh, let's try to see if we can uh, use those numbers to calculate this change in entropy, right? The idea is that we have to calculate here the heat reversible, and uh, this is an isothermal gas expansion of an ideal gas, and here we draw from our knowledge of the first law, where for an ideal gas, the internal energy only depends on temperature. So if the temperature doesn't change during the gas expansion, then we know that the change in internal energy is zero, and what that means is that your work is equal to the minus heat. Now, this process is reversible, so we can write that subscripts here, and what that means is that what you have right there is simply minus work reversible over T. And we do have an equation for reversible work. That's something that we worked out in uh, the first law, which is minus nRT natural log of the final volume V2 over the initial volume V1 divided over the temperature. So those temperatures cancel out. And then what you get out here is that this change in entropy is simply nR natural log of V2 over V1. A very simple expression, as you can see. Okay, great, so uh, we just have to, to punch in the numbers. But before we do that, uh, something that is very easy to do with entropy is anticipate what the sign uh, of this entropy should be, of the change in entropy should be. Right, but we just look at the uh, uh, process and we realize that uh, when the gas expands, uh, the gas uh, has much more uh, uh, room to move, right? That gas is more entropic in the final state than it is in the, in the initial state. As a matter of fact, the gas expansion is a mass dispersal. So that should be entropically favorable, right? So that should, that should uh, uh, give, uh, uh, 
especially to a, uh, a rise in entropy. And what that means is that we expect this to be a positive number. Right? Again, the gas is more disordered when it has much more room to move. All right, so whatever we do, we, we have to make sure that that uh, pans out, that the sign that we get out of this is positive. All right, so punching in the numbers, we have here 2.00 mole, and then we have R 8.314 newels per mole Kelvin. And then uh, here we have the natural log of the ratio of the volumes, which are 20 liters over 10 liters. All right, those units cancel out, mole cancels with moles, so your units are going to be newels per Kelvin. And because this is the natural log of two, it's a natural log of a number larger than, than one, then it will be positive, which means that everything is positive, and that bursts out an expectation that that gas should be, should be gaining some entropy when it expands. Okay, so we calculate delta S uh, uh, for this uh, is going to be equal to uh, plus 11.5 joules per Kelvin. Okay, so that's uh, the result of this uh, calculation. All right, very good. So this is, this is what happens when the process is reversible. So the second step here that we're going to take is let's assume now that we're actually doing this irreversibly against a constant external pressure of one atmosphere. Right, so this is no longer reversible. Instead, we're applying here a constant external pressure of one atmosphere. And that doesn't change from the start to the end. All right, so uh, let's see how then we uh, solve this problem. All right, so we find that we go to the definition of entropy, and the definition of this is this one. All right, so so uh, in principle, uh, when we take that definition, what we actually have is exactly the same as what we have right here, right? Uh, that well, this is still isothermal. Right, so the integration simply gives you this. And uh, this is a little confusing because, of course, you're doing a process that is not reversible. However, the equation uh, forces you to use the uh, reversible heat. Okay? And this is something that is confusing, but it should make sense uh, once you learn that entropy is a state function. Right? So the change in entropy of the system uh, only depends on the initial and final state of the system, not how the process is taking place. Right, so we're trying to compare a process that is reversible and a process that is not reversible, but the initial state and the final state of those two processes are identical. Right, so you start with this and you end up with that. And again, because entropy is state function, it actually really shouldn't matter uh, how the process takes place reversibly or against a constant external pressure, the change in entropy would be the same. And again, that, uh, what that means is that when you look at this expression, right, even though your brain is telling you, well, I'm not really doing a reversible process, really it doesn't matter. That equation uh, always works, right? Because entropy is a state function, so it really is, is not that dependent. So if you have here reversible, then you have to use reversible even if the process is not. Right, so what that means is that uh, the same numbers that you actually have worked out in the upper panel uh, here are going to work out for, for the rest, right? Again, uh, it's a state function, so it really doesn't matter if you're doing this against a constant external pressure or reversibly. So just to re re reiterate, this is still an isothermal gas expansion, so uh, the change in internal energy is zero, which means that the work is equal to minus heat, and then uh, you would just punch in uh, the same, the same uh, equations, minus NRT, natural log, of V2 over V1, nothing changes over T, and that, that's still going to give 11.5 joules per Kelvin. Kelvin to the minus one. Okay, so uh, uh, this is it. That's how you calculate the change in entropy in gas expansions. Um, a caveat is that this is for isothermal gas expansions, right? So, so that's what we have seen in this video. Okay, so we have learned two very important things um, uh, in this video. The first one, is how to obtain a workable expression for the change in entropy in an isothermal process. Okay, so that's just the integration of this into that. And the second one, and this is important as well, is that entropy is a state function, right? So if you're trying to calculate the change in entropy in the system, 
right? Uh, the only thing that matters is what is the initial point in the system and the final point in the system, not how uh, the process is carried out from that initial point to that final point. What that means is that even if you do the, the, uh, this gas expansion in two different ways, reversibly or irreversibly, you're always going to get the same change in entropy in the system as long as the initial state of the system and the final state of the system is the same uh, in both processes. Okay. In the next video then we're going to move forward and try to see uh, how to calculate the change in entropy for a heating cooling process in which the temperature will change.